In the world of cookies, very few brands have achieved the level of popularity and success as Oreo. Their iconic black and white sandwich design is synonymous with their name. Everybody knows what an Oreo cookie is. But beneath their sweet, indulgent, cookie-crumbling exterior lies a story of bitter deceit and deception. You see, Oreo's a knockoff. Oreo is a ripoff. Oreo is a copy. And this is the tale of how Oreo faked it and made it. And the surprising role that another cookie played in Oreo's ascent to king of cookiedom. Way before Oreo, there was Hydrox. Hydrox was introduced in 1908 by the Sunshine Biscuit Company. And as you can tell by the design, they were the original sandwich cookie. Two chocolate flavored wafers filled with a creamy vanilla center. And as soon as they were released, they quickly gained a loyal following and became a staple in American homes. In the early 1910s, a young businessman named Sam Porcello was working for the National Biscuit Company. When he was tasked with developing a new cookie, Sam found inspiration in Hydrox and recognized their potential for improvement. He set out to create a better version of the sandwich cookie, one that would ultimately surpass its predecessor. And he did just that. You see, they both have floral designs on the chocolatey wafery part. The Hydrox cookie looks a bit lighter in color than the Oreo cookie. They both have a round shape with vanilla cream filling in the middle. And the packaging? They both use the now classic Oreo blue packaging. About the taste, the Oreo cookie has a slightly more bitter flavor compared to Hydrox. The filling in Hydrox comes across as somewhat sweeter, creating a different overall balance compared to the Oreo cookie. Historians have also reported that the crunch of the Hydrox cookie is far superior than that of the Oreo cookie. In 1912, Oreo made their grand entrance, trying to captivate consumers with their chocolate wafers and creamy fillings. Despite their clear similarities, Oreo did manage to distinguish themselves thanks to their superior marketing strategy. The company spared no effort in creating a memorable brand, launching innovative ad campaigns and building a strong presence in the marketplace. While Hydrox did have a head start in the cookie game, Oreo quickly took the lead because of their relentless marketing efforts. Nabisco invested so much money in promoting their cookie, they even went so far as to leverage the iconic design of the cookie as their own and building these amazing slogans like Milk's Favorite Cookie to position Oreo as the cookie of choice for people of all ages. They positioned themselves as the original. They positioned themselves as the superior and they kept emphasizing their unique recipe. They kept emphasizing their distinctive and unique design and their iconic taste. And they positioned themselves as the market leader. They aimed to create the perception of being a higher quality cookie, that they had more appeal, that they were more popular than their competitors. And you know what? It worked. They kept introducing new flavors and variations. They kept getting people engaged with their brand. They kept it fresh. And when they started to expand their product line with things like the double stuff Oreo cookie or the golden Oreo cookie and all these limited edition flavors, they kept creating excitement and, and, and creating repeat business and purchases by their customers. And then, and their marketing people were so good. I mean, some of the Oreo advertising campaigns are the best of all time, like the Twist Lick and Dunk campaign. That became the most iconic cookie campaign of all time. Everybody knows the Twist Lick Dunk campaign. They created a new way for you to consume the cookie. 
The campaigns built the brand recognition and, and, and they built these emotional connections with people and they kept establishing Oreo as the go-to choice for cookie lovers. But marketing isn't the only way they won this. They won this using some freaking awesome tactics. When they hired people to distribute Oreos in the supermarkets, those people were told to make sure they positioned the Oreo boxes in front of the Hydrox boxes on the shelves in the supermarkets. Making sure that they were hiding the Hydrox cookie box with the Oreo cookie box. And giving that perception that Oreo is the OG and Hydrox is the fake. And then this thing happened in the market where the success of Oreo started to create other copycats in the market and sandwich cookies started to pop left, right, and center. And on the receiving end of all of that competition growing was the Hydrox cookie, the original sandwich cookie. They could no longer maintain market share against the juggernaut that had now become Oreo and all these other little pop-up brands. Hydrox's sales declined and their consumer base shrunk and 90 years into selling that cookie from 1908 all the way to 1999, Hydrox fell off the cliff. It was discontinued entirely. Oreo had finally done it. It took them 90 years, but they finally put the nail in the coffin of the Hydrox cookie. Oreo's success story is absolutely one of deception but it is also one of absurd innovation. They recognized the potential of the Hydrox cookie and they improved on that. They, they changed it from a cookie to a brand. They built an entire thing around it and they brought that to the marketplace. And they established themselves as the king of sandwich cookies, even though they weren't the king of sandwich cookies yet. They faked it till they made it and it absolutely worked. In 2015, Hydrox tried to make a comeback. You can find a Hydrox cookie in shelves in supermarkets, very few supermarkets. But there's all this talk about the recipe not being the same, they don't taste the same. I don't know, I haven't found a Hydrox cookie box to try it. So the next time you dip an Oreo cookie in milk, remember, Hydrox was there first.